Hi, I'm Eric with Simply Elegant Home Cooking. Today I'm going to show you my recipe for chicken cacciatore. This is a really delicious Italian-American recipe. This is elegant enough to serve to a crowd, but it's also easy enough to put together on a weekday meal. So stick around. Let me show you how I do it. So one of the keys to making this dish turn out really, really well, because we're going to sear the chicken, is to make sure you buy really high quality air chilled chicken. If it's not air chilled, there's going to be too much fluid. And when you go to sear it, a bunch of fluid's going to come out. It's going to prevent you from getting a nice uh, browning on the skin, on the exterior of the chicken. So I have a whole air chilled chicken. I've cut it up uh, into eight pieces. I like to leave the breasts whole. They are much bigger than the other pieces, but the breast meat cooks much faster. So that's actually going to help you get an even cook to leave the breast meats full. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to season with some pepper. Some salt. and some crushed red pepper. So I'm gonna pat that down and then I'm gonna hit the other side too. So I've now seasoned uh, the other side of the chicken with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. And I should also note, it's very important to remove the chicken from the fridge a full hour before you're going to cook it. And you also want to pat it as dry as you can. You want to get rid of any moisture on the chicken. That's going to help us get a good sear. And I have a large five quart saute pan. This is what we're going to cook the chicken in. I'm using stainless steel. You can also use cast iron. You just don't want to use non-stick. And you want to use a really, really big pan because uh, you want to make sure you don't overcrowd the chicken. If you have anything smaller than a five quart saute pan, you probably want to do it in several batches. Uh, but I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. This is light oil, so it has a high smoke point. I'm going to add that, spin it around to coat the pan, and now we're going to sear the chicken. And we're searing this on a medium high heat. I'm gonna let it go for about eight to 10 minutes. You really wanna let it go the whole time uh, until it browns nicely. You don't wanna move it around and it should release from the pan when it's been fully seared. At that point, we'll do the other side. So I'll check back with you in a few. Okay, and our chicken's been going for about eight minutes now. I'm gonna give it a flip. You'll notice it comes right up. Uh, we allowed it to sear properly and it comes right up when we go to flip it. And this looks good. You wanna get a lot of color. Don't be afraid of a little bit of char on the exterior. So I'm going to flip this and we're going to let it go about five to six minutes on the other side. And one tip I like to use, uh, it's a good idea to use a splatter shield. So as your chicken's uh, cooking on each side, just do that. It's going to prevent making a big mess in the kitchen. Okay, so this has been going for five minutes now on the other side. You don't have to sear it as long on the bottom. It's less important because it doesn't have the skin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this down <coughs> a little bit between medium and medium low. We've been searing on medium high. And take this out. And you can see we have some great fond in this pan. There's a lot of bits that's going to really uh, help us develop flavor in the dish. And now that we've removed the chicken and let that come down to temperature a little bit, I'm going to add uh, two medium yellow onions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that in and just stir it around a bit. And we're going to let this cook for about two minutes before we add the rest of the vegetables. So our onions have been going about two minutes. Uh, you don't want to cook them too much. You just want to give them a quick head start. I'm now going to go in with about four cloves of garlic that I have uh, broken down in a garlic press. 
two red bell peppers cut into some pretty big slices. And some sliced cremini mushrooms. Oop. And I have about equal parts peppers and mushrooms. So you want to add those ingredients and give everything a big stir to incorporate it. And once you have that cooking, we can add a little bit more salt and pepper. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this cook for about eight minutes or until the vegetables uh, develop a little bit of color. It's between medium and medium low and you just want to stir it around a little bit occasionally as it cooks. Okay, and here's about how far you want to cook your vegetables. You don't want to cook them all the way because they're still going to be, you know, cooking away in this dish for quite a while. So what you want to do next, you want to take a cup of dry white wine. I'm using a Pinot Grigio, but you could use, uh, you know, really any dry white wine. I do recommend using Italian, you know, since we're doing an Italian dish. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit past medium. And uh, what you want to do, you know, you want to just kind of stir this around scrape the bottom of the pan. Most of those brown bits have come up already, um, but this will remove any remaining fawn from the bottom of the pan. It'll help us develop that flavor. And uh, what you want to do, we're going to cook this for maybe about eight to ten minutes or until the liquid has uh, reduced at least half in volume. You want to make sure that you get rid of all that alcohol before you add anything further to the dish. So I'll check back with you in a few. So as we cook down that wine, I should make a couple of notes. Uh, number one, you want to make sure that you use a wine you can actually drink. It doesn't have to be a really nice bottle, but make sure it's at least drinkable. And also, this is about the uh, speed of the boil that you want. It's really not at a full boil, just a rapid simmer. So we're going to let it go a little bit further. We want to reduce the uh, volume of the liquid just a little bit more before we add the tomatoes. And so one of the star ingredients in chicken cacciatore is the tomatoes. I highly recommend you use San Marzano tomatoes, but you also want to get, be sure to use the best quality ones you can find. You want to make sure that they're DOP certified. It will be right on the label. And you're going to also, with your DOP tomatoes, they're also going to have this seal. So if it doesn't have that, they're not authentic. You want to make sure you get the real stuff. So the wine has now reduced quite a bit. It's reduced at least half in volume. That alcohol taste is gone. It's all been evaporated. So now you want to add a 28 ounce can of the DOP certified San Marzano tomatoes. And you want to put them in their hole. We're going to break them down in a minute, but you can just dump the entire can and its liquids in. And now that you've added the tomatoes, you can turn the heat back up um, medium high. And what you want to do is you want to just break these. I usually just break them in half. There's no real science to it. You can, uh, you know, break them up more if you like. But I like some pretty big chunks in there. So I usually just take my spatula and, you know, cut them about in half. Give it a big stir. So our sauce is simmering away. This is how you want it to look. We're going to allow uh, about five or ten minutes to cook this sauce before we put the chicken back in. And while we wait on that, I just wanted to take a moment to thank my subscribers. If you've been watching these videos over the last few months, I really appreciate the support. If you're new to the channel, I hope you do subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more recipes, uh, a lot of Italian-American classics like this chicken cacciatore dish, uh, but a wide range of other recipes too. And for anyone watching, if there's any recipe that you want to see me prepare, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you want to see, and I'm going to select at least one recipe from the comments below for my next video. So our sauce is really uh, bubbling away. At this point, it's thickened up a little bit. This is the consistency you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat down to low, and I'm going to add in some fresh herbs. I'm going to put in uh, two sprigs of rosemary and about four or five sprigs of thyme. And you can use either or or a combination. You know, you can use what you have, but these are my two favorite. That's going to add a really nice flavor. Rather than cutting it up, we're going to leave it in there whole and let it infuse. We're going to take the herbs out of the chicken cacciatore before we serve it, but by then they will have infused throughout the whole dish. And now that the sauce has reduced in heat a little bit, it's on low, we can add back in the chicken. So you just want to add this in in an even layer.
And also, you want to add back in any of the juice uh, from the chicken. As that was sitting out, there'll be a little bit of juice that accumulates. We can add that back in. And now that this is cooking away on low, we're going to let it go for about 40 minutes, uh, checking it occasionally as it goes. Uh, if you prefer, you can season with salt and pepper. I don't think this dish needs any more. We added it a little bit early on, so we'll check back with you in about 40 minutes. Okay, so 40 minutes later, this is how everything looked. The chicken should be cooked perfectly. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the heat off and we're going to let that rest for about 10 minutes before we serve it. That's going to help the flavors meld. And uh, just when you go to serve it, you want to make sure as best you can to remove those herbs. Um, it's not the end of the world if somebody gets that on their plate, but um, it's going to be better presentation to remove that in the final dish. So this is the finished dish, chicken cacciatore. Uh, let's dig in and see how it tastes. Mm. So much flavor in that chicken. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this dish. I hope you enjoyed the recipe, the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what dish you want to see me do next. I'm Eric with Simply Elegant Cooking, and I'll see you again soon.